In this video, we're we'll taking a look at the nature of solids, their properties, crystal and non-crystal structures, and allotropes. So solids, unlike liquids, have a fixed location. It still has a fixed volume, but the particles are unable to move about each other. They all they do is vibrate within their place, so they have this fixed volume and fixed shape due to it. The particles are arranged in an orderly and predictable fashion based upon what the substance is. So the atoms and molecules are really tightly packed together, making them very dense. As dense as liquids were and difficult to compress, solids are even more difficult to compress. So we don't have any compressibility at all. And again, those particles have fixed locations. They can vibrate. They're moving. Kinetic theory tells us they have some sort of kinetic energy movements going on. Again, they're just not able to flow by one each other. They are in a fixed location. So solids, when they go from their solid state to a liquid, they melt. You put enough energy in that they begin to vibrate enough that they're unable to be locked into place anymore. They overcome the attraction forces that are holding them into those fixed places. And now is when they be able to move because of how much energy they have and how violently they are now vibrating in the place that they are located. That so They just break off and now become freely flowing liquids. And then in the opposite direction, going from a liquid back to a solid, that is the freezing point. So the melting point and the freezing point are the same temperature, just depends on which direction you're going, whether it's from solid to liquid or liquid to solid. But again, like for water, at zero degrees Celsius, it melts, and at zero degrees Celsius, it also freezes. So these crystals that we see when these particles come together actually are a reflection on how the atoms and ions and molecules are getting together on the smallest level. That littlest, bittiest unit of how they come together, they just keep building that same three-dimensional pattern, giving us this one large crystal that actually looks like the small unit cell that makes it up. So again, because of what that substance is, it has a predictable pattern, and we know how those particles are going to get together because of how those molecules, ions, and atoms are attracted to each other, and how they build together, again, in that unit cell, that smallest group of particles retaining that geometric shape. So here we see a unit cell, we see a brick. And anytime you see bricks put together making a wall structure, we know they look like this. That is how bricks get put together to make the strongest structure possible for a wall. You don't just line them up on top of each other in perfect rows because then they fall apart much, much more easily. But when they're staggered in this formation, it makes them much stronger. And that's why brick walls are always put together in this design. Here we see salt. Salt, sodium, chloride, one-to-one -one ratio between the sodium ion and a chloride ion. And again, on the smallest level, they get together in the same exact cubic formation. And that's why we see any time salt in this cube shape. They have these 90-degree angles. They make a rectangular or even a perfect cube because of how those sodium and chlorides get together in that same pattern all the time. There's seven different crystal systems that can be formed based upon how the particles get together, again, in that smallest ratio of those ions or atoms or formula units or molecules of how they come together. And it has to do with the different sides and different faces and number of edges. And there are, again, there are seven different ones that you can classify based upon the different axes that make them up and how many faces they end up being. We're not going to be too concerned with that. We'll take a look at them in the next slide. But as far as memorizing them all, not a big deal. So here are those seven different crystal systems. Isometric, we have three different axes. They're all the same, all at 90 degrees. And you know, we should recognize this from the uh, diamond uh, crystal and structure. Next, then we have hexagonal. Hexagonal we see in aquamarine. Again, now you have four different axes, three of which are symmetrical, three uh, of which are at 120 degrees, one's at 90 degrees. Tetragonal. We have three axes where one's now larger, two are symmetrical, all at 90 degrees. We saw that in zircon. Uh, trigonal in the middle there is um, what we see with quartz, and it has three equal axes, but those axes aren't at 90 degrees. The orthorhombic is what we see with topaz, again, three axes, all of which are different, but they are all at 90 degrees. Uh, the monoclinic there is what we see with borax, it has three axes all of which are different, two of which are gonna be at 90 degrees, the other one is gonna be off of 90. And then lastly, the triclinic there we see with talc, and it has three axes, all of which are not equal, none of which are 90 degrees. So it's very similar to like 
looking at geometric shapes like a rhombus and a square and a rectangle and how they relate to each other with these different crystalline structures. But again, we're not going to be too concerned with trying to memorize which one's which and which one falls into which category. So allotropes. Allotropes are a singular substance at the same state that actually have different ways in which they come together. So they have two or more different molecular forms of that same element or compound in a physical state. So the most famous one you probably think of is uh, carbon. So certainly those different forms of carbon have very different properties because they have these very different structures. The way in which they combine together, they bond together, are slightly different, so therefore you end up with some very different properties. So we look at three different ones here, fullerene, graphite, and diamond. Uh, fullerene you're probably too uh, familiar with, it looks like a soccer ball, but the graphite and diamond for sure. Graphite uh, we know is very conductive electrical current, not so much with heat, as opposed to diamond, which is the opposite. It's a great heat conductor, but not a good electrical conductor. Graphite's very soft, it's in your pencil, you write with it. Diamonds are the hardest uh, substance known to man. Again, that is due to the, how they come together. So here we see those three different forms. Up top is the fullerene, that soccer ball kind of shape, the hexagons and pentagons, making a uh, spherical structure as they combine all together. That one's got 60 different carbon atoms in it coming together to build that fullerene ball there. Uh, on the right, we have graphite, which again, you see those layers. It becomes like sheets. Again, it's much softer than certainly diamond, which is the bottom left, which is very hard, indestructible, tetrahedral, um, carbons bonded together over and over and over, making that crystal lattice of a tetrahedrally bonded together carbons, again, really, really strong. However, not every single solid you see actually is of a crystalline state. These things are called amorphous solids. When you don't have a real set structure, then there is no actual crystal that you make. You're non-crystalline solid. You are an amorphous solid. We see that at, with compounds that are heated up and then as they are cooling down they're cooling down so fast and solidifying so fast we can get a chance way to come up with their orderly pattern and they just have this randomly arranged shape we can recognize this because when they break apart they don't break apart into a given smaller structure when you take a salt cube and you break it apart you still get bunches of little cubes you don't get these weird shaped salt cubes same thing with diamond diamonds have those edges that when, when you cut them they always have that same 109 and a half degree angle when on all the edges and sides in diamonds again you have that regular structure all the way down to the smallest level but like in glass which is a transparent fusion of inorganic substances silicon dioxide and it cools again really rapidly it doesn't really get to a crystallized state and that's nice orderly structure so therefore when it breaks you see all these different weird fragments and every little piece of glass is very different from each other you don't have any given angles that are the same you don't have the same number of edges it's just this weird mess and so here let's take a look on the molecular level here when sio2 is in a crystalline shape we have these like octagon type pieces coming together repeated over and over and over as opposed to when it's in the glass kind of shape and it's this weird arrangement of no real set structure at all different numbers in each ring there no set angles and faces and everything's awkward so that's why when we see the sio2 crystal here the quartz then we have these predictable shapes and they all have that same hexagonal kind of outside edge coming to a point up top as opposed to glass when it breaks apart and you get all these weird different fragments again look at all those different angles and number of faces and sizes that come with glass when it breaks apart due to the fact that again there is no real set structure looking at the molecular level up top